Almost finished at the outbreak of war, the Worcester Odeon finally opened on the 2nd of January 1950. It was one of the Whedon Odeons and remains open in the 80s as a triple. Like Bradford, Elmer's End and Hendon, trough lighting had lost favour on account of its labour-intensive maintenance cost and chandeliers were back again. Like the Worcester Theatre, the Odeon Westbourne Grove, London, has little of the streamlined flair of the 30s buildings. It was a modification of a pre-war Andrew Mather design by Leonard Allen. after the backstores area had become two mini cinemas. Also in London, the Highgate Odeon was the last of three pre-war schemes eventually completed. T.P. Bennett and Son were the architects. The Odeon opened in 1955 and closed in 1973 to be demolished the following year. New Odeons opened, but many more closed as audiences diminished including the Elmer's End Theatre, one of a batch discarded in late 1956 and early 1957. It was demolished, but others took longer to go away. Lewis Odeon was to have been disposed of to Classic in the famous sale of 1967, but it was already under offer from the then expanding Miles Byrne organisation. The asking price was £35,000, when Miles Byrne turned it down, Roy Markwick of Uckfield Picture House became interested. Once again, negotiations came to nothing. Here is the derelict Odeon at Lewis, designed by Andrew Mather, opened in 1934 and closed in October 1971, and photographed here in 1933 and then in 1978. It was finally demolished in 1982. You can almost hear the echo of the thousands of patrons who walk down this long arcade. Perhaps they stopped off in this small restaurant area for a cup of tea, a cake or egg on toast. Still faintly visible are the letters of the word Odeon in a style at variance with the better known one. Oscar Deutsch was against having a cafe in the theatre. It was only at the insistence of local director E. O. Culverwell that it was incorporated in the plans. large entrance hall stood at the end of the arcade and its last pay box can be seen. The auditorium stands empty and unloved. It was in the stadium style, seating 518 in the front part and 468 in the raised rear section. Lewis was the first Odeon to be built from scratch by Andrew Mather and is very similar to his adaptation of an existing structure at Kemptown, Brighton. At Lewis, his budget was twice that of Kemptown, and he came up with a very lavish, spacious and fully equipped Odeon that had excellent sight lines and splendid acoustics. This is what the auditorium looked like at its best, back in 1934, when it first greeted the public.